First, it eliminates the percentage-based requirements for uh, parties to get on the ballot. Independent can't get on the ballot. It um, will require new parties to get 10,000 signatures. It will require uh, statewide unaffiliated candidates to gather 5,000, and then it goes down the list a little further for Congress, State House, that type of thing. It uh, ends up being 1,000 for Congress. Um, so it'll lower those requirements. It eliminates the need for petition signatures for a writing candidate. Um, which that is a big one, I think. Beyond you know, other ones are, are, I think, significant. In instance, you know, they're so high. You know, it's been that way for a while. The write-in candidates, North Carolina and California, are the only two states that require petitions for write-in candidates. All the states that do write-in votes, and we actually require way more than California does. Um, so that's one thing that just doesn't really make sense to me. But uh, it does that. Um, we also will have something with the primary elections. A lot of the representatives were worried about it costing more with runoffs, that sort of thing. And so we have a section for the primaries where now it will allow political parties to choose how to nominate their candidates by convention or primary. Uh, and it has a breakdown if uh, you have less than 10% of the voters that you have to do it by plurality vote with the primaries if you choose this, choose primary. And over 10%, they have a choice to do by plurality vote or use the runoff system. So it'll be able to save the money, the state money. Uh, if one of the major parties decides to do by convention, that'll save the, the state um, hopefully a little more money. Um, yeah, not saying they will, but uh, they might, and uh, so it'll do that as well.